Mr. Dunnigan. Yes, that's the question I asked, sir, uh, Mr. Cohen, uh, about the parking. Do you see the parking lot remaining the same? Will it be increased in size at all? Will it remain public, or do you think it'll have to be made private for that? How will that work? It will be larger, and there will be portions of it that are public, portions of it that are private, and uh, um, you know, coming up with that proper mix of parking to, to real estate is and, and fitting it in, in, in this side of the site is, is and not making you know and, and, and making it. Uh, as attractive as possible uh, is, is really the, uh, one of the challenges of, of, of the site. I think um, the excellent work staff has done to get the railroad spur purchased will allow us to increase the parking on that site and maybe you know the hopes would be to retain the number of spaces available to the public or even increase it um, in addition to what will be needed for the site. Uh, Councilwoman Sotel. Yeah, thanks. Could you talk a little bit about your um, success rate as far as um, filling your apartments and your uh, retail commercial site? You know, as far as your other properties, uh, I know you said <clears throat> that your uh, river walk's already 30% pre-leased. Uh, so what do you envision, how long would it take to get completely leased, or if you have any information on how it typically runs uh, with your other properties? Well, it's a, it's a great question, and uh, I wish I had a, a, an answer for it, but I believe the nature of this location, okay? When I started the presentation, I said, I think this is one of the best development sites available in Greater Cincinnati today because of the combination of the urban setting, a wonderful community, the natural resources of the bike trail in the river, um, it makes it unique. 30% uh, pre-lease for a multifamily project is honestly unheard of. And the success we had in Milford, or we're having in Milford, I really do believe is going to parallel what we see in Loveland because the similarities of the site are so, are, are, are so profound. So um, while I can't give you a, an answer because it's uh, you know it's, it's not something I can tell you, but I think that the similarities and, and when we you know hopefully you'll be able to join us on a tour of Milford, and I think you'll see a lot of similarities between the size of the site, the way it's it, it's it's nestled in a downtown urban uh, setting. Um, I, I think you'll see a lot of similarities. I think we could expect uh, a pretty similar uh, uh, lease up. Uh, Councilman Fitzgerald. Uh, thank you. Uh, one last suggestion and one last question. My suggestion is if you haven't already gotten acquainted with the gentleman over there uh, at the far end of the table, uh, do so because he in this whole room is the only one who really lives here. He operates a business in, in downtown Loveland. And my take on this is that when this development occurs, you all are going to be quasi partners. And quite, quite honestly, I think the, uh, the, the, the cooperation and coordination that will come from among you all stakeholders is what's, it's not these people, they're going to make or break it, it it's, it's you folks. So, uh, and, uh, uh, and Ralph's also been instrumental in, in uh, through the kind of informal network that we do have of, uh, of merchants and owners down here, which I think over time will have to become much more you know, formalized. And uh, as I've said on more than one occasion, if people are looking for this to succeed uh, and be long-term viable because of people who sit at this at this desk, they're wrong. I mean, it's it's you all. So that's that's my preach for. For today, but the question is: uh, You mentioned, uh, uh, particularly, uh, empty nesters uh, being the, the prime tenant in Milford. Why would uh, someone who is at that stage of life, looking for that kind of a of a uh, of a residential product, why would they rent an apartment rather than buy something? Uh, First of all, I want to uh, thank you for your recommendation, and I think it is critically important that we establish a, a very, very strong relationship with the Merchants Association. 
Um, this project will have an enormous impact, positive, I believe, on the downtown businesses and, and, and augmenting what is a relatively small downtown right now, I think is also going to help the overall downtown. So, um, you know, just to use the Milford example, uh, very, very, very early on, we sat down with the Merchants Association, laid out our vision for uh, Riverwalk, uh, and today we actually have, have uh, coupons in many of the uh, merchants where if, uh, if one of their customers comes and leases from us, they get a $250 gift certificate to that particular merchant. So, you know, we're encouraging that partnership, if you will, between downtown merchants and their customers and us, and we're putting together uh, welcome packets right now that include uh, coupons, if you will, from the downtown merchants. So, uh, I will very much uh, introduce myself to Ralph when this is over and, and, and make sure that we get involved with the <coughs> association. Um, as far as the question of the demographics, when we planned Riverwalk and in planning River Trail, we expect the demographic to be primarily empty nesters and primarily a young, very active uh, professional. And the reason that the empty nesters have rented at such great uh, volume at, uh, in, in Milford has largely to do with the fact that the other demographic, the young professionals, don't think quite as far ahead as, as the older demographics. So our expectation is that when the project is completed and the facades are done and the guys that want to ride their bikes and, and, and get on the kayaks and so on and so forth, they're going to make they're going to come out and look today and make a decision where the uh, empty nester community is, uh, they, they think a lot more about it and, and they measure uh, much more before they make their final decision and they're happy making a decision four or five or six months before it's done. Um, now why is that demographic leasing instead of buying? Because the economy has changed dramatically and even though this is a group of people who have grown up with the American dream being owning your own home, uh, they read the same papers we all do and recognizing that the American dream does not always apply to real estate. It does not always go up. Uh, it is risky, particularly condominiums, particularly in Cincinnati, Ohio. Condominiums in Cincinnati, Ohio have an average uh, uh, time on market for resales of 365 days. It's enormous. And uh, the appreciation in condominiums in Cincinnati has not been good. Um, and, you know, throughout the leasing of Riverwalk, people have asked me, uh, why aren't you selling them, or, 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 or I, I want a condo. And I always reply to them, why? And they're like dumbfounded, because they don't know why they want a condo. Says, well, uh, I want appreciation. And then we talk about the realities of appreciation with respect to condos in a city like Cincinnati. And they're like, oh, well, I want it maintenance free. Like, well, you have maintenance free. The only difference is you don't have to put down a, 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 a significant deposit. You're not responsible for your own uh, maintenance and upkeep, and you know if the furnace goes out, you call the landlord, and, and, and we take care of it tomorrow. So it really is in, 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 in this economy. It's it's really kind of the best kept secret for people who want condominium quality finishes. Because if you walk into one of the row houses, which hopefully you all will at Riverwalk, you will see what the majority of, of high-end for sale condominiums look like. Stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, hardwood floors, um, large windows, big balconies. I mean, the, the, kind of, the same kind of things that you would see. Ceramic uh, tubs and, 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 and insets. And, and uh, uh, you know, you'll see it for yourself. And, and it's really the same finish that somebody would get in a condominium without, uh, without the commitment. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, the young professionals today, people who who grew up in the era of 9-11, they don't want commitments. They don't want to own homes. They want to be footloose and fancy free and flexible. They want to be on a river, they want to be on a bike path, and they want to be able to lock their door and go travel and, and, and come back and, 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 and end the lease and go rent somewhere else and move and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, I think in today's economy and in, in, in today's society, uh, luxury high-end rentals in urban communities are going to be very, very popular long-winded answer to the question. But, uh, yeah, thank you. I, I, we've got one other piece of business to fit in here, so we'll have to do these quickly. Um, 
I do residential financing and I can tell you condo financing can be rather challenging for all the reasons that you just stated and that's for the consumer and I can only assume it's only that much more difficult for the developer.